Israel. He wants to shake us to be the people that he created us to be. There's no need to be afraid. No need. Kelly was talking about the song I heard when I was literally dying on the way to Champaign. The song said, can you reach my friend? You're the only one that can. Reach your friends. Those that don't believe. We got to let them know that God is a good God. He's not trying to punish us. He's a good God. He's calling us. Ain't a devil in hell going to keep me from my church. I'll be here. Unless they handcuff me and take me away. I'll be here. I'll be praying for you. I'll be praying for me. We can't quit. We were talking this morning. The scripture says when he comes back. Will he find faith in the earth? Or will we be cowering in our houses afraid to come out? When he comes back, will he find faith in the earth? So this morning, oh God, we know that the just shall live by faith. We know that faith is the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. We know that without faith, it's impossible to please you. So let us build ourselves up, oh God, in your most holy faith, God. Let us not waver. It was in my spirit this morning and I heard, why halt ye between two opinions? You see, I don't watch the news. I'm just getting stuff from people. I didn't know that people was buying up toilet paper and paper towels and hand sanitizer because I don't watch the news. And I had a couple of opinions. But the Lord brought it to me this morning. Why halt ye between two opinions? Don't halt, saints. Stand your ground. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We can't lose. We can't lose. I'm going to hug people. I'm going to do just like I've been doing. Yes, wisdom is necessary, but I'm not going to let the devil lie to me because he's a liar and the father of lies. So, Father God, you have given us all the measure of faith. Let us stand up, oh God, in our rightful place and declare a thing. You told me if I declare a thing, it will come to pass that if I open my mouth and I speak no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I declare in the name of Jesus that we shall pray one for another. That we will let go of all the little differences that we have with one another that hinder us from doing what we know we should do. Touch God. Every person in this sanctuary on today, build a fire up under them, oh God, where they won't be able to be quiet and they won't be able to be still and that we will tell the world what a good God we serve. I declare in the name of Jesus that we shall rise up. That we shall take heed to the shaking. But the shaking's not about the world. It's about us in here. That we will take heed, oh God. So bless God every house. We will let nothing turn us around. God, you are the master. You knew us before we were in our mother's womb and we, we thank you that you know us. Now guide us by your voice, Holy Spirit. The still, small voice that speaks to each one of us. 
Help us, oh God, to be drawn to you. To pray, oh God, more and more and more and more. What you give us to pray, Holy Spirit. Father God, bless each house. I apply the blood on each house in the name. Nothing shall come nigh your dwelling. I bind every doubt in the name of Jesus. And I loose your truth, God, that you are a God that cannot lie. That you are for us and not against us, Lord. But let us come up a little higher, Lord. Let us come up a little higher in our praise, in our prayers, in our worship. Who shall ascend into his holy hill? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. Father God, I ask that you bless those, oh God, who are still in the grieving process. We lift up our dear brother CL to you on this. He's here, Lord. He's had a great loss, but he's here, Lord. He didn't let that keep him from being here. So I ask for more strength for him, Lord. More strength for his sons, oh God. More strength for his daughter, God. More strength for his grandchildren, God. Hold him up with your strong right hand only the way you can, God. Every person that's grieving, Mother Jimson, she's here. She's here in the midst of her loss. And there's many things that I don't know about. But you're here this morning. You came despite the bad reports. You came despite what they're saying. That we shouldn't be in crowds. We shouldn't shake hands. We shouldn't hug. We should isolate ourselves where the devil wants us to be. So Father, I thank you for those that are dealing with things that they haven't talked about, Lord. I ask that you comfort them in the midst of whatever it is, Lord God. Lord God, I lift up Eva, who is battling COPD. I command those lungs to open up. I command that airway to open up right now in the name of Jesus and the breath of life flow out of her lungs in the name of Jesus. Restore God, for you are a restorer. Lord God, I lift up in the name of Jesus, Nikki with stage four cancer. And I command that cancer to die in the name of Jesus. I declare no weapon formed against Nikki shall prosper. I declare that that cancer is even now shriveling up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. I ask God that you bless all those in the nursing homes, God. Bless the medical staff that are overtaxed right now, God. Let every negative word die and fall to the ground, God, including anything that's come out of this mouth. In the name of Jesus. It's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, God. I want to be stronger, God. I want to pray longer, God. I want to do more for you, Jesus. More, Jesus, for you. Holy Spirit, rise up in each one of us. Rise up and stand us up in the Spirit on today. We shall not bow. We shall not bow. Lord God, I ask that you touch our pastor on today and our first lady on today. I ask, Lord God, that you give him a ready word for us on today. 
as we encourage one another let us encourage the shepherd of this house who bears the burden of so many let us come together in love see it's all about love I can't pray for you if I don't love you if I got something against you I can't pray for you I'm going to pass you by so let love reign love is the principal thing love the Lord thy God with all thy heart soul mind and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves so Lord God the blood of Jesus covers us we stand strong it has been applied to the doorpost of every person in this house to their extended relatives to the uh, uh, God it's been applied and we will not walk in fear we shall walk with power and the love and the sound mind that you have given us bless all over the world today God those that are sick right now God those that have contracted the virus oh God we lift them up to you Lord God but we still know that you are in control so Father we thank you we thank you we, we ask you to let us walk in the footsteps that you've ordered for us because you've ordered our footsteps but let us not deny the place and the things that you would have us do and say. So we give you the glory this morning, Lord. We give you a hallelujah. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise him today. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord God. Hallelujah. You are worthy, God, to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again, everybody. Right there in your seat, lift your hands. Don't worry. Don't allow the enemy to deter you from your worship. God, today we thank you. We honor you and we praise you and God we are agreeing with your word for it is settled and it never changes so we thank you bless now God let us receive what you have for the church today I promise you I give you all praise credit glory and honor Jesus name amen all right, come on, clap those hands one more time for Jesus. Come on, shout glory. Shout hallelujah. Come on, shout thank you, Jesus. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. We thank God for everyone here today. Come on, let's thank God. Is there any visitors today? Anybody never been here on the Sunday morning? Just stand where you're at so we can honor you today. Amen. Everybody's been here. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you today. This is the time for you to be saved. Got to get a witness? If you ever needed to be saved, you need to be saved today. Amen. Why? Because you need the blood to cover you. Amen. This 
virus, whatever it is, cannot come nigh unto your dwelling because of who you are. Okay, not who you are, but who he is. Amen? Maybe pull the gain down a little bit. It's important. It's important for us to see that this is an hour that God is still on the throne. Amen. Come on, everybody, give God some praise for being here today. Amen. You, you could have stayed at home, but God bless you to come on out. Just so glad to see Brother C.L. Come on, let's thank God for Brother C.L. and his daughter and grandchildren. Everybody there, God bless you today. Amen. The young man there, I'm not sure if that's your husband or not. Is that, is that your husband? Not, not yet? Let me quit. Let me go on down. And on. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. If I don't meddle, I wouldn't be TM. Amen. But some of you Bible scholars know, and this ain't my message, but I'm going to just throw this in so we can get on down this road. But some of you Bible scholars know that there was a place called Gosha. This place was located in Egypt. This was in Egypt and this was during the time of the plagues. And because Pharaoh would not let God's people go, then God permitted plagues to come on the land. And when these plagues came on the land, uh, one of the plagues was that God allowed the water to turn to blood. And one of the plagues, God allowed the locusts to come. And God allowed the flies in the beds and, 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 and the frogs. And, and there were many plagues that came to Egypt because Pharaoh hardened his heart and wouldn't do what God told him to do. And that was to let God's people go. But you need to understand there was a part of Egypt where the Israelites lived, the chosen ones lived, and in that place where they lived, it was called Gosha. And none of the plagues came nigh unto Gosha. The sun didn't even shine in Egypt, but in Gosha the sun kept shining. In down in Gosha, when the blood had turned the water into blood, the water in Gosha was still crystal clear. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to help you today to understand that even though these things are going on, this virus is going on, if you are in Jesus, then the blood of Jesus covers you. Amen. This is a time to claim your salvation more than ever. Amen. This is a time to believe that you are part of the Israelites, the chosen family, because God said through Christ, we are all now one in him. We have every right today to trust God at this time. Amen. This is the time. If you're not saved, you need to get saved. Come on, everybody, do this. Come on, I want y'all to do this this week. Say, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, this is no time to be timid with inviting people to Christ. Amen. When they get in the toilet paper, say, bow your head. <laughs> bow your old big head and accept Christ right here at Walmart. Amen. Because why? You don't want the plague, right? You, you don't want to die, right? And they're going to say, no, I don't want to die. I said, bow your head. You don't need to be salt peddling this thing this week. You need to be serious. You, you, okay, you need to be willing to take a cussing for Jesus this week. Because some of y'all won't witness because you're afraid you're going to get cussed at. So what? Cuss me out while I'm asking you to come to Christ so when this enemy takes your life, the blood won't be on my hands. Come on, somebody. How many know it, it don't get no more serious than it is right now? Amen. And so you don't have to be all soft and peddling at ease. Say what the Bible says. Now, I bumped some of y'all instead of shake y'all hands today when I came in just because I'm trying to be respectful to you. You know, I'm just trying to, so you don't think I don't want to shake your hand. I want to shake your hand, but I'm just trying to be politically correct right now, so I'm bumping. Everybody kind of laughed when I bumped them too. They were like, ha ha, pastor. Ha ha, pastor. <sighs> We're here in faith today, amen? 
We're here believing God today. Now don't be sitting here and think you covered when you are not covered. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Y'all, y'all didn't like that part. This, this ain't no time to just blend in with the saints. You need to get under the blood for yourself. He said when he see the blood. So what does that mean? You got to be saved right now. I don't care. I'm so, you know, pushing y'all hard. I'm pushing hard right now. You need to be saved. This plague is real. You need to be saved. What else has got to happen? You need to be saved now. The only reason why you don't want to be saved is you want to do some more sin. But it's not written that you're going to get to sin. So don't wait until you can test and see. No, you need to get saved now. You need to give your life to Christ now. Amen. Amen. Why? Because it was only those that had the blood over their doorpost that the death angel could not get to. And this is the time we're living in right now where the blood of Jesus, somebody said the blood still works. Oh, I wish the ham and jamming folks is gone, but man, I'm telling you, this is a time for us to not get back into depression or sadness, but this is a time to thank God I'm covered by the blood. Hallelujah. Minister Esther, we're covered by the blood. Come on, let's thank God for Minister Esther today. Although I think she's still in Milwaukee. I don't know. You're in Milwaukee? Yeah, she here at New Life today. Come on. God is good. Amen. The blood still works. The blood still works. That's what we're holding on to today. The blood of Jesus. We're believing God today. Amen. So yes, it was, you know, uh, a little bit of pushback from people that, well, we shouldn't be here today, but I'm thanking God we're here today. Amen. Amen. Some people showed up at the banner location today. I was glad they showed up today. Amen. Now, I want to go in the nursing home. They just won't let me. But it wasn't that I didn't want to go in there. Amen. They said they don't want me to bring nothing to them little sweeties. I was going to bring them the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I was going to bring them the anointing. But the administration said, oh, no, you can't come in here. Amen. God is still on the throne. Now, don't play with it, though. You are not saved. I would be real scared. I have a whole box of toilet paper and a whole bunch of handy wipes and whatever else. Cause, but if you say, amen, I'm not telling you not to take precaution. I'm not telling you to use some wisdom, but I'm telling you don't be paranoid. Don't be afraid, you know, because people are going to other places, but they tell you don't go to church. But other folks, uh, you couldn't get into Myers the other day. They were showing Myers. It was more than 20 of them in there, too. They're right there at Oldham's. <laughs> Me and Elder Odoms, hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? And we was toe to toe right there with him. Amen. I'm telling y'all today, this is a time for you to use your faith. Okay, this is a time for you to believe you got Jesus for real. You got to believe Jesus for real now. This ain't this. No, oh, well, I, no, no. Today, you need to make, you need to know that you know that you know that you know that you're shown up. Know that you're saved. Amen. And that you're on the Lord's side. How I many on the Lord's side? Shout glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Call it. Let's go on into the message. We got a few minutes, and then we're going to just talk to you about some subject matter that uh, I really believe is critical for this hour. <laughs> Be not deceived. <sighs> Do you understand that if it says "Be not deceived," you could be deceived? The flip of that is, if he tells you "Don't be deceived," then there is a possibility that the enemy can trick you. That he can make you think you're right when you're wrong. Okay, let's just keep it 100. A lot of folks don't believe that death could come for them today. That means you are deceived. Because he can come for every one of us in this room today. So what does that mean? If you're not saved, you're being deceived. You don't believe it. That don't make it not true. And so the assignment of the enemy is to deceive people. 
and to make people believe what they know is the truth God said it but to tell them and convince them it's not true there's nothing more important than for us to be ready amen don't know what's coming but I want to be ready when it comes Amen. I don't know. I don't know who's out there that's, you know, got a spirit of murder on them, but I want to be saved if the spirit of murder. Come on. I want to be sitting in the church saying, praise the Lord. And all along, I'm not, I don't have my business in order. Amen. It's time. It's, if, if there ever <laughs> has ever been a time that we need the Lord, we show sure enough. We need him right now. Can I get a witness? Y'all ain't never heard of the NBA closing. You ain't no man. I'm just tickled because a whole lot of folks are going to have to go home because there ain't no other place to go. And they're going to meet people they haven't met in years called their husband and their wife. Right? I know I know you. <laughs> People go meet their children. They haven't met them in a while. They can say, now your name Junebug. <laughs> Mama, you name me. Daddy, you name me. Well, I mean it. The governor right now, is some of y'all women getting ready to get in trouble, showing up, and some men. But the governor right now is considering closing every restaurant. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> Because you're going to see your stove has been in the kitchen all along, but you're going to see it. And you say, what is this machine here? What is this, what is this thing called? <laughs> what, how you turn it on? <laughs> yeah. God is up to something that he's permitting all of these things to go on. But for no other reason, somebody said that we get close. How many believe God wants us to get closer to him? If you, if you don't have any, you know, you know, doubt about it, how many believe God is calling us to a closer relationship with him? Yeah. Amen. People have worshipped the sports industry. They've worshipped these men and women that play these sports. They, they, they've worshipped. I don't know who in this room can't go to the gambling boat. <laughs> yeah, they said the gambling boat. No, you can't, 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 no, you can't, can't, no. Go home. Amen. You can't gamble. They closed it down. You want to get out in the middle of the Atlantic or the Pacific and float? You can't even float. There's no cruising. Go home. Amen. Lord, can we pray? Everybody, let's pray. Say, Father, help these parents. There's no school. Jesus. Jesus, <laughs> little Bubba gonna be home all day. Like <laughs> little Margot gonna be <sighs> what? <laughs> and there you gonna be like, oh, go to school, Mama. I can't go to school today. <laughs> Daddy, I can't go to school today. Come in here and play with me. Amen. How many of y'all know about patty cake? We're getting ready to go back to patty cake. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. Roll them up and roll them up. And... Oh, yeah. Some fun is getting ready to start happening again. Amen. How many of you know we're going to sit around the tables and talk to one another? Amen. Come on. This is a, this is a, a terrible thing, this virus, but it's a good thing because the scripture says, and all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. How many love the Lord in here? Shout glory. glory. Hallelujah. This is a time to get close to God and to your family. Amen. Time to love on one another. Amen. Take advantage of these few moments. Amen. Come on, let's finish. I just got started, but let's finish. Everybody read Galatians 6 and 7. What does it say? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, what? That shall he also reap. Don't kid yourself. You cannot do wrong and expect right. 
You're being deceived. The enemy's assignment is to deceive you. It's elementary. What you do is what you get. And if you think I'm going to do wrong and it's going to be all right, he's tricking you. I don't know how many women have got pregnant believing they wasn't going to get pregnant. Look how quiet it is. All y'all that got pregnant and were surprised. I already know what it takes to get pregnant, but then you surprise. I'm pregnant. <laughs> Somebody said, you got deceived. How many guys are mad because they got babies and they act like they don't know how they got the baby? You pregnant? Boy, I didn't have to tell you either. You, you the daddy. <laughs> and you deceive if you think you can bed folks down and they not get pregnant. Look how quiet it is in here. Hey Amen. You, you, you're going to smoke weed and you're going to believe you're going to be okay. They got some stuff out there killing folks right now. And they disguise it as weed, but it's a deceitful trick of the enemy to get you strung out on something that will cause you to lose your life. Amen. Don't be deceived. Don't let the enemy tell you you can do this and it's going to be okay. Amen. We're living in a time when many people are dying and they're dying in prematurely, early 10s, 20s, 30s. Why? Because the enemy has told them they can get away with something. It's time for us to understand this thing is serious. This is no play thing. He is coming to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Don't let him deceive you. Don't let him make you think, oh, it ain't no big deal. Oh, yes, it is. It's time for us to get so close that we can hear the voice of God for ourselves. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on, let's get another one. What does it say in Genesis 3 and 4? And who? Somebody say Satan. Who entered the serpent. Because the serpent couldn't talk, but the devil got into the serpent. Somebody said, be careful who's talking to you. Because a lot of times it's not that person, but Satan is speaking through them. He, speak, he, he, he don't have a physical body, so he gets into other folks' bodies, and then he speaks through them. And he, he and, 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 the, verse, and, the, blah, and the, the completion of this verse says, And the serpent said unto the woman, what? Ye shall not surely die. He lied to her. He deceived her. How many know if you read your Bible that uh, Eve already told him when he said, can y'all eat of all of the fruit in the garden? And Eve told the serpent, God said, don't mess with that one tree in the midst of the garden because if we mess with it, we will surely die. But then the Bible said he beguiled her. That means he, he convinced her that what God said was not true. What's happening today? We're allowing people to talk to us long enough so they convince us what God said is not true. We let people tell us what God told us, then we turn around and believe them over God. Amen. Come on, parents. How many times your children try to come home and tell you their friend said? Your friend said what? Well, you, my friend say we all right doing this. We, we can, you know, ain't nothing going to happen to us. And how many know that's a spirit of deceitfulness? Satan is working, and so he told Eve that they would not die. And it's clear that Eve died and Adam died. Amen. And so what is this job of Satan to deceive you? And he can come in many forms. He's not just coming like no snake. You haven't seen him around here talking through no snake no more. But he talked through two-legged snakes. <laughs> yeah, all y'all who've been deceived by a two-legged snake look straight ahead. Some human being have told you you can do something God told you not to do. And it's to mess you up. Amen. It's to deceive you. It's to get you caught up in being what God told you not to be. Amen. 
So in this hour we're living in, there are many wolves in sheep's clothing. I got to keep it 100. I don't have no uh, preacher friends. I love y'all more than I love preachers. Amen. Because preachers are not all who they say they are. And some of them are wolves. And they got on sheep's clothing. And they'll tell you what God didn't tell you. They'll tell you you can get away with this and you can get away with that. But God didn't tell you that. It's in this hour we're living in. Many people are being deceived from the pulpit. People are going to church and expecting to hear from God and they're hearing from a devil in a robe. They're hearing from a prophetess liar and a prophet liar. But they got on the gear that looks like they're a man or woman of God. Somebody said, don't be deceived. Don't let nobody tell you after God speak that you need to hear what they got to say. A lot of us are checking with people after we know what God already said. Well, I'm going to just call my friend and see what she thinks. Why do you care what she thinks? Why do you care what he thinks? The enemy's assignment is to deceive you. Amen. How many want to go to heaven? Don't be deceived. Hell is real. And I'm telling you, this is the only time that uh, the preachers, not the only time, but this is the most important time that we should talk about hell on Sunday mornings. Y'all quiet now. People don't never want to hear about hell, but there needs to be a time when we talk about hell. We need to talk about the reality of hell according to the Bible. And the preachers and, 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 and church folks and religious folks say, well, if you talk about hell, people ain't going to go to church. Well, then let them go to. <laughs> Mad at you because you talk about hell, but then they going to quit coming to church because you talk about it. Well, that means they, they're being deceived. They want to go. No, they don't want to go, but that's where you're going to go. If you're not, if you are not careful, the enemy will convince you. And there's some churches who do not even believe hell exists. They tell in their congregations, there is no afterlife. That when you're dead, you're done. But the Bible, somebody said, but the Bible says <laughs> there is a place called hell. Amen. And the hell was not created for you and I, but it was created for Satan and the fallen angels. But if you are not careful, you are going to spend eternity with Satan. See, you over here, I'm over here, but the Bible says there is a life after death. There is a life after death. Now, you don't want to die to say Pastor Miller was right while you burning. <laughs> My mama was right. My preacher was right. My daddy was right. My friend was right. You want to get it right over here. Come on and shout. We still having good church. Are we not having good church? I know. I know. I really want to preach one of them good James Brown messages, but I'm just telling y'all, it's a critical hour. And if people don't get saved now, I don't know when they're going to get saved. We got this this invisible play going on according to science and man and yet people are acting like I'm still not ready to get saved he's deceiving people I don't care how good that man is to you that woman is to you you need to be saved how much I love him is he worth going to hell for well we ain't gonna go Who, how you know you're not going he's deceiving you She's deceiving you. Come on, let's finish. I know y'all want to go. We gonna go. John eight and forty four. What does it say? And the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abide not in the truth, because there is what no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is what. And what is he? Father. He's a father. Y'all listen, listen. All you Bible readers, you know this is Jesus and he's talking to the church leaders. If you didn't know, when he says, ye are of your father, he is talking to the preachers. 
He's talking to the leaders of the church during the time he was on the earth and he is saying they were not of the father of Abraham. They were not the father of, of, of light, but they were of the father of darkness. And he said, ye are of your own father, the devil. I'm trying to help somebody in here who will be so naive to think that devils are not in leadership in churches. You don't, now listen, don't be thinking that's going to get you over on judgment day. Well, I went to church and there was a devil there. He said, I told you he was going to be there. I told you he was going to have on a clothes like he was a man or woman of God. I told you wolves in sheep's clothing. And that's why I told you to prepare yourself. I told you to watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. I told you. Get full of the Holy Ghost so he can discern. So that de- How many know you get full of the Holy Ghost? You can see a devil even if he got on a suit and a tie. You, you can see a devil even if she got on a long robe and a bun on the back of her head. You can see it. You can see if he is righteous a deacon, a righteous uh, deaconess. You can see it. Just because they play instruments, just because they sing in the choir, if you get full of the Holy Ghost, you won't get deceived. Come on. The enemy assignment is to deceive, and here clearly it's in red, it's in the writings of Jesus that there were people that he himself called out that was over the church. And I'm going to keep telling you, I don't have no preacher friends. I'm coming down all day streets. I don't care because I'm more concerned about your soul than being friends with preachers. Amen. And every one of y'all in here that say I'm your pastor, you need to make sure you pray and fast so God won't let me trick you. Y'all didn't catch that. Y'all didn't even catch that. Yeah, people fall in love with their pastor and, and their first ladies and the leadership and, and then all of a sudden they blind. I, I didn't even see him was. Is he hitting Sister Miller? No, he really wasn't hitting her. <laughs> Sister Miller screaming, Help! <laughs> Amen. Come on, everybody, pray in the name of Jesus that God keep your pastor, that the, that the Lord keep your first lady. Come on, let's pray for our leadership team. Come on. He always comes through leadership. He doesn't come through lay people. He comes through folks holding positions. I've been pastoring 30 some years and all my wars have been with leadership. People that were in leadership are the ones that stabbed me in the back. They're the people in leadership that lied on me and talked about me and put me down and poisoned people against me. Wouldn't lay people with the folks that I had close to me. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing now. It was Judas that kissed Jesus. Who do we think we are as preachers that Judas ain't gonna show up at our church? Amen. So the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost didn't allow me to be caught off guard. He let me see him. So I resisted the crazy, like, mm -mm. I'm going to trust God even now. Amen. Lots of attacks are coming, but it's coming from the leadership. We ain't talking about our president, but we got to pray for him. Because all the stuff going on is at the top. Come on, y'all. The Bible says wickedness in high places. The enemy is always coming for those in authority to take their authority. And to make them do things that will cause millions of people to suffer. Amen. Somebody said the Senate need to get back to work. So they can vote and agree that they're going to cover all the people that's out of work. We need our senators to make sure that everybody's out of work still get a paycheck. Everybody that needs to go to the doctor can go to the doctor. How are we going to give trillions of dollars around the world, but then we got Americans can't go to the doctor. 
can't feed themselves, can't take care of their children. How many of these families now that's going to have the issue of daycare because they can't afford daycare, but they got to have some way to take care of their babies? We got the money. We just need to distribute it to who? The poor people. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, yeah, you poor, you're in trouble in America. You better be saved so the Lord can help you. Amen. In this great democracy, it's designed so you can be a billionaire and you can live outdoors. In this great America, we have many folks that are outdoors. They don't have the basic necessities because this democracy says we have every right to get all the money we can get and we don't have to give you none. Come on, y'all. Somebody say you need to be saved in this hour. You need God. Come on, y'all. When you run out of toilet paper, you're going to need God. <laughs> oh, Lord. Somebody say, God know how to get you to pray. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> it's me, Lord. <laughs> I need some shaman. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> some of that old synthetic could do. <laughs> God said, I know how to get you to pray. Cut your toilet paper off, didn't you? <laughs> it's tickling me, boy, because these folks have lost their mind for toilet paper. Amen. Ain't got nothing in the cupboard but toilet paper. Pop it open. Just toilet paper. Did you forget to get some food? You won't need no toilet paper. You ain't got nothing to digest. <laughs> Come on. Amen. Come on, let's finish. I know y'all ready. Let's go. Look at this, Galatians 3 and 1. Everybody read, Oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you, that means deceived you, that ye should not obey, what? The truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Now we got one more verse in this Galatians, but I got to bring y'all up to speed on this. What has happened is that the Galatians have went back to the law. They got deceived. What does that mean? You are never going to be saved by anything you do. But under the law, you have to do a lot of things in order for you to be saved. And so the Galatians were made to believe that they had to have water baptism to be saved. Or they had to, you know, honor the Sabbath to be saved. Or, you know, like now in 2020, you have to have certain clothes on to be saved. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can't eat no pork if you're going to be saved. Y'all quiet now. I mean, you can be a, 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 veg what's a veg veg vegetarian. You can Eat all the rabbit food you want. But if you don't have faith for uh, pork, then you better eat the rabbit food. <laughs> but according to the word of God, Jesus Christ took care of everything on the cross. That's what this whole verse is about. This whole uh, uh, third chapter is talking about how it is we either believe by faith that Jesus is the Christ or we are being bewitched. Totality, everything that you need is when you believe Jesus is the Christ. Everything is in Christ. You can't, okay, did y'all read in your Bible where he said it's finished? Yeah. Tell me how you're going to finish what's finished. So whenever you go and try to finish what's already finished, you are doing overkill because it's already. F <laughs> Anybody ever heard about in the Bible where Jesus sit down? How many know you don't sit down unless it's finished? Come on, ladies, you got two more dishes in the rack. How many know you don't get to go and sit down until you get them last two dishes out? Come on, fellas, you got one little corner of the yard left to mow. You don't go sit down and push the mower in the garage. You go and get the... Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> then you push it in the garage, and then you go in and get you some tea. Get you some red Kool-Aid. I like to help y'all every week. No Budweiser's. No Miller's. No wine coolers. Y'all quiet now. 
Amen. Don't get deceived and think because you did a good deed by cutting the grass or, or finishing the dishes. You need a beer now. You deserve, I deserve a little something. Somebody say, he's deceiving you. He's tricking you. Amen. Don't be deceived. Whatever was needed and was done on the cross, shout glory. Somebody say, it's finished. It's done. I'm saved. Tell everybody the truth. Everybody say, I did not deserve it. So when people come to you and tell you you're not saved, tell them I am saved, but I'm not saved because I deserved it. Because you notice that I'm not perfect or I said something or I'm not acting just right. You're right. You're absolutely right. But the blood of Jesus, come on. The Lord included me because he knew I was going to be short. I was going to come up short of the glory. Come on. He went ahead and paid my bill knowing I couldn't pay it. Anybody ever have people like that in your life that'll pay your bill, know you can't pay it, and they'll pay it for you? Somebody say, not really. I, I really haven't, I haven't ran into them kind of people. But you might be blessed enough sometimes uh, if you are a, a good child, your mom and dad will go ahead and take care of some things for you. If you're a good child, they go ahead, they know you ain't got no money, and they'll buy you some tennis shoes. <laughs> They'll buy you some clothes. They'll, they'll pay for all your, your schooling just because they know you can't, you can't pay for it. Amen? But the truth of the matter, Jesus knew we couldn't pay for our sin. He knew we couldn't. He knew we were not going to have enough to compensate or to satisfy heaven, so he went ahead and died for us. Come on, shout glory. All right, let's get this last one. This is a good one, 3 and, and 28. What does it say, everybody? There is neither what? Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all what? Shout glory. Somebody say, I don't have to be nobody else. I'm good. Just who I am. You ladies don't have to be a man. A man don't have to be a woman. Come on. You don't have to be a Jew. You don't have to be a Greek. You are who you need to be. Because if you accept Christ, we all in. Christ has made it so that we all are saved today. Come on, shout glory in this place. Shout hallelujah. You ain't got to get up at least while you're while you sitting there. Hey, hallelujah. I can shout today because I'm in. I believe Jesus died for me. Anybody believe he died for you? Anybody believe he paid the penalty for your sins? Anybody believe that Christ hung there and he died until the sun wouldn't shine? Hallelujah. He went in the grave and he went to hell for me. I don't have to go to hell. You don't have to go to hell. Christ went to hell for you. Shout glory. Christ did it all. Christ took the keys of death and hell from Satan. Christ resurrected. Come on here. Christ got it with all power in his hand. He stripped Satan of his authority. He stripped him of his rights over your life. You don't have to be a slave to nothing. If you're giving in to sin, he's tricking you. Thank you, God. Is there one more? We're going to go. And if ye what? There are what? Then. Okay. Oh, he didn't want to say. Okay, let's get it. And if you be in Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You are saved by a promise. I said you are saved by a promise. God said it, that he saved you. You believe the promise? That you are saved by the promise? Then that means you are saved by the promise. Christ died for us and Christ rose again and we are saved by the promise. Somebody say, ain't no physical proof. Quit looking for a look like I'm saved. Quit looking for some physical proof of your salvation. You are saved, I am saved by the promise of God. How many of us can tell the truth? Satan tells us on a regular basis we're not saved. Come on. You know, I'm telling you, if, if you're honest, he'll tell you, you see what you just did? You ain't saved. You see how you talk to your wife or your husband? You ain't saved. How you didn't speak to that lady? You ain't saved. 
You ain't saved. You 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 still uh, slipping and you're still tipping and you're still dipping. Amen. Amen. You're not saved because you quit slipping, tipping, or dipping. You slay, You are saved by the promise. You should quit. Don't let me leave that door open for you to continue in the crazy. Because if you get the Holy Ghost, how many know the Holy Ghost will whoop you? How many ever been whooped by the Holy Ghost? I get whooped on a regular basis. Y'all are more saved than me, but I'm one <laughs> that the Holy Ghost is always chasing me. He's always convicting me. He's always telling me, why did you say that? Why did you think that? Amen. You need to treat Sister Miller better. I said, what? He said, better. Every man in here that's got a wife, the Holy Ghost will make you treat your wife right. If you got the Holy Ghost, it'll make you treat your husband right. If you got, come on, he'll make you, come on. He'll, he'll, okay, he won't make you, but he'll, he'll put strong conviction on you. You'll have no peace in the crazy no more. You don't need no preacher on Sunday morning. Some of y'all getting mad at me just because I said what the Holy Ghost has been telling you all your life. Stop it. I ain't going to that church. I get tired of hearing Pastor Miller. That's all he do, run folks down. He ain't nothing but a, a criticizer. He's judgmental and he, he always condemning folks. You lying. I'm trying my best to tell you what will help you. Who in this room want to go to heaven? Don't be deceived. Don't let the devil tell you that you got to have something outside of Christ. You are complete in Christ. You have everything you need in Christ. Is that another scripture? Is that it? I was hoping I didn't forget this one. Come on, everybody stand up. And if you got a big mouth, read it loud. Did y'all catch the first part and said study? To show who approved. Tell your neighbor, quit worrying about everybody else. You need to study the Bible for yourself. You need to read the Bible for yourself so no preacher can tell you something that's not true. Your wife can't tell you what God didn't say. Your husband can't tell you what God did. Your mama can't tell you. Your big mama can't tell you. Come on. No religious person can tell you. No government can tell you. You got to study so you don't be deceived. What did, what did the Bible say? What did the Bible say? How do I treat my wife, my husband? What did the Bible say? How do I treat my fellow man? What did the Bible say? What is the position that God is in our life? The Bible says love God first of all more than anybody. Then love your neighbor as yourself. The Bible said forgive if you want to be forgiven. The Bible said it. Put away from you filthy communication. The Bible said Love your enemies. The Bible said. Honor God with your first substance of everything you get. That's what the Bible says. Look out there. I got two people said amen to that. The rest of y'all still in the tide. You just, you ain't convinced yet. You still, you don't believe what the Bible says. Amen. That's why we don't pass the pen. That's why we don't have no assessments because we don't want you to use all of that to get away from doing what the Bible says. You should honor the Lord yourself. You should be able to be convicted about your giving. You should be convicted about how you treat your fellow man. Amen. You should be the one to say, I believe what the Bible says. There's certain things I just can't do anymore because the Bible tells me not to do it. Are we living in a critical hour? How many agree that it's a critical hour? So I'm going to ask my ministers to come up. And we're going to pray for some people. Don't play with it today. Don't just come just because you just don't come because you want to have an encounter with God today. Come because you want to make a change in your life. Come just because you want prayer. You need prayer. You're not ashamed of me. Would you pray for me, minister? Because I need prayer in this area.